Welcome back, everyone, to another episode on Living Your Greatness. This is your host, Ben Mummy. And the goal of the show is really simple, to learn from those who have mastered their craft and what they do. So if you're new to the show, please be sure to hit that subscribe button. And today, I am excited to announce a new guest. His name is Bill Bezenhofer. He is the CEO and co-founder of The Fresh Factory. So Bill, without further ado, welcome to the show. Good to have you here. Oh, thanks so much for having, for having me, Ben. I'm so excited to be uh, be on your podcast. Super stoked to have you here. Let's kind of kick off by, you know, starting with your origin story. So sure. where did you spend your formative years growing up? What inspired you to pursue, you know, a career in finance, venture capital, and then now the food industry? Yeah, so I, I grew up uh, in a suburb right outside of Chicago. Um, you know, I had two working class parents, a uh, blue collar town, so to speak, and, uh, was lucky enough to be able to, uh, go to school, um, in college that is, uh, on a football scholarship. Uh, I was a kicker and punter and had the ability and, and, an opportunity to, to go get a, an education, which uh, is the most important thing. And through that, um, you know, had, had been taught the work ethic, um, and the time management, since I was a, a young, young child, I'd grown up in that northwest side of Chicago, uh, playing, being very active in multiple sports and learning, you know, the life lessons that you would get, um, uh, you know, growing up. You know, I, uh, I'm an only child. Uh, I had two phenomenal parents and role models uh, that I was able to look uh, up to um, just from their work ethic and what they did. Um, and, you know, Again, in everything in life, I think through the amount of people that you meet, create opportunities. And, you know, I was pretty fortunate and lucky um, that I had some friends uh, who had started a company uh, in the finance industry, in the trading industry, that is. Um, and that kind of got me my first initial start uh, in finance. And so through that and being able to kind of help with uh, building a fairly large uh, proprietary trading firm. Uh, one that actually was the first company ever to bring handhelds down to the trading pit floors. Um, you know, have to be a part of something like that was pretty incredible. Um, and then leading into working with my now partner and, and, and business partner uh, with the Fresh Factory uh, and moving on into what I would say is, you know, uh, the venture space and being able to help grow and build out a $210 million venture fund, uh, which now is close to they probably have under a billion in management, um, but really being able to see and have the opportunity to meet some incredible people, um, but also see the incredible opportunity that's out there within, you know, the world itself with the technology um, to the, the food industry and all the way through uh, everything that's out there. And, and that's kind of how, you know, I've been lucky enough to be able to be in the right place in the right time with the right people. And quite honestly, just being an entrepreneur and seeing that there's opportunity out there um, you know, we've been able to kind of take advantage of that. It was so great, you know, to hear about your, your origin story and like the impact that your parents have had on, on your life. What is one common myth about the food industry that you would like to debunk right now? Yeah, sure. You know, I think there's a couple for sure. I'll just touch on one. You know, I think sometimes people think of, uh, you know, healthy, clean label, like better for you food. Like I just say uh, healthy food. Um, doesn't taste all that great at times. And that's not necessarily the case. I think that uh, unfortunately, you know, I think myself even growing up and whatnot, um, you know, a lot of the food that, you know, I grew up and eating and whatnot, um, there's a lot of additives and preservatives in them, quite frankly. And, you know, eating clean, you know, very clean. Um, you know, I don't know that, again, in the early 80s and whatnot, uh, you know, with marketing tools and pieces that are out there, uh, I'm not entirely sure that people realized like how important it was to their health um, to eat clean and then, you know, um, and, you know, clean meaning, you know, fresh ingredients, um, looking at backs of labels and being able to pronounce the words that are actually on the backs of those labels, as opposed to all the additives and preservatives that are in there. And so I think sometimes, you know, as you've been brought up on certain foods and whatnot, um, you know, there's, a, there's a, a myth that maybe, you know, that uh, eating clean isn't, doesn't always taste the greatest. Um, but I want to debunk that right here because I can tell you right now, um, you know, we've been in this space for quite some time. 
Um, and we've got some fantastic people that work with us and we create some of the greatest dishes that are out there and they all are very clean and better for you products. Right. And who are some of the fantastic people that you work with? Because I know you probably have a huge list. So yeah, we can hear more about that. Yeah, sure. So, you know, I think we've got a great, you know, look, first and foremost, you know, I've got my business partner and co-founder, uh, Nathan Lorel. Um, you know, I think he's been a pioneer in many different industries, um, from renewable energy to the trading industry. And now with me, as we look into this food industry and really trying to move this, uh, move the food industry forward and really try to get people eating what I would say, honest food or better for you food. Um, so, you know, he's obviously someone who has been not only, you know, a great friend, but a great mentor as well. Um, as we've kind of moved this company along, but, you know, I've, again, we've, we've, we've put a team around us and advisors around us that are just, you know, second to none, um, you know, from my, my CFO, John Mikulich to my uh, COO, um, Carl Purnell, my head of business, you know, Mike Weglars, you know, we've got a solid core team um, of people that have been with us for quite some time um, and adding new pieces as you go, right? Because as you grow as a company, um, you know, sometimes the businesses outgrow some of the people from the beginning, um, but those people are still with us but we've had to go and, and we brought some other people in to help us kind of go to the next level. But, you know, we, we've got some phenomenal advisors um, that are out there, uh, you know, uh, Jeff Canalupo, Lindsay Levin. Um, these are people that uh, are, 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 you know, masters in their areas that have been able to kind of help us, you know, grow our business and have kind of stuck with us through the, the down times, you know, they're not always great when you start companies um, and all the way through the good times. A good team for any business is, is crucial for success. And especially yep. if we're trying to optimize, you know, the food industry and, yep. you know, provide better goods and services, what is like the greatest why right now of fresh factory, you know, in terms of having an impact on health of others? Yeah. I mean, I think again, um, the one thing I always say is that like manufacturing in general is like really, really difficult, right? Just in any manufacturing, um, food manufacturing's harder fresh food manufacturing is even harder because what you're trying to do is take ingredients that were made from the ground essentially right um and grown and you don't have the same thing every single time right there's not an additive or preservative in there so you're making this fresh product knowing that it's really really difficult but knowing that the end result is actually going to help the people that are out there and and know that this is like again there's proven facts that obviously eating healthy and clean products is better for your life. And again, I can't make a claim on longevity, but it should in fact help you live a better, cleaner, healthier life. And the fact that we're able to start doing that um, and really have a platform to do it, I think is very key. Cause I think that's one of the reasons why Nate and I, as we had this thought, as we were looking through businesses, where we felt there just wasn't as many people out there within, you know, I'd say the U S um, from a manufacturing perspective that had that capability to do some of this. Um, and I feel like what we've tried to do is take some of these emerging brands and these better for you products that have started to get a lot more traction. We want to give people a voice an opportunity to be able to take their products and really move it down the chain so that literally everybody can have it, not just the top 1%, but like everybody that's out there that can go and afford it. Because obviously, as we know, with inflation, it's been difficult in general. But we want to make sure that people are still having healthy, better for you food, despite the fact that that's the case. Like, so we're doing everything in our power to be able to create a platform so that literally everybody within the United States and anywhere else that our products may go to within Canada as well, that they're able to have access to that, as opposed to having the middle of the store product that sits on the shelf for two years, you know, that maybe isn't the best and healthiest for a child or even, you know, an adult. I love that. I have so much, you know, respect for what you're doing. And especially like myself, right? I was telling you earlier on that I do a lot of cycling. I do a lot of trail running. Yeah. I'm very active. So then when I'm putting food in my body, you know, I want to make sure that I feel good, right? If I'm doing yep. all that training, yep. I want to make sure that I feel good. And yeah. it's not just kind of like you said, it's not just that 1% or high performers. We need to see more individuals having access. And so a question I have following up from what you said is, 
What is an example of some of these great products? I think the one thing that we've done is, as we've tried to make sure that when we have customers that we, whether we try to go actively get them or they come to us, um, we're really trying to find people that have a similar thesis to what we're doing, right? Someone that's out there that's trying to make, again, this is, sounds so corny, but make the world a better place. And what we're trying to do is make the food industry a better place. So providing whether we're working with up and coming baby food companies to people that have been in the industry for 60 years that have a product that just want to make it cleaner. They just want to make it cleaner because they realize themselves that they're trying to have a cleaner product so that it can still taste great, but then be healthier and better for the people that they, they serve themselves as customers. So, you know, we've got many different uh, aspects and different angles of products that we make. Um, but again, looking totality wise, just really trying to find the the right groups of, of businesses that are feeling similar to us in the movement, what I would call is kind of taking us forward within the, within the food space. Something that I want to pinpoint that I think is really important for all of my listeners to know about is that the Fresh Factory is known, you know, for its vertically integrated model. So how does this approach ensure product quality and as well as sustainability? Yeah, totally. So, I mean, I think when, when, when you talk about that, and, and I appreciate you bringing this up because, you know, when you build like a platform and you vertically integrate, I mean, you're, we're talking from, from farm like ground farm all the way to end consumer shelf. And so for us, I think it's really important. And I think the industry itself has started to do a better job of policing, I'd say, but really like we have take great pride in the fact that, you know, our facility is, you know, at the highest certification it can be within the industry. Um, and quite frankly, we have an understanding and a know all of where our product is coming from. Right. I, you, you not, sometimes you don't know where things come from, so you don't know what's actually going into it. That's not the case, right? When you actually know the farmers themselves and you have relationships with them all the way through to, again, even packaging and understanding where packaging comes from, um, all the way through the, the, the supply chain and then all the way to the end consumer. Like I think for us, like building that vertically integrated platform is so important because you have checks and balances. You know where things are coming and you know where they're going. And I think that's like a really big piece of what we've done because again, in some cases, I'm not, I, I don't, I can't speak for everybody, but you know, I'm not entirely sure how many others are doing it similar to how we're doing it, quite frankly. Something that I want to dive a little deeper with is, you know, how does the Fresh Factory identify and nurture emerging brands? You know, you spoke yeah. about them before, but how do they actually identify them? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, multiple ways, quite frankly. Um, it, like, for example, one way, uh, people just are going online trying to find someone that will listen to them. Basically, they've got a concept, they've got an idea, um, and they really just hit us up on our website, right? Um, the other biggest one, though, is word of mouth. It really is. Uh, you know, it's, just, it's, it's pretty interesting how quickly, you know, you go above and beyond for one person and or customer and how quickly that spreads to others who are looking, and again, the community itself, um, you know, we work with companies that are multi-billion dollar uh, publicly traded companies, all the way to, again, people that are just getting started, have a phenomenal concept, have a great, great, uh, you know, people behind them, um, have a great tasting product. They just don't know where to go and what to do. We have the ability to go do that. So we can play with the people that are just starting to try to get into business to help, um, you know, mentor them and bring them along. And we can go all the way up to the publicly traded billion dollar companies that are looking for, you know, new ideas, innovation, helping them through whatever they may need as a business themselves. Um, you know, we can provide, you know, pretty much, you know, anything there. And again, when we talk about like emerging brands, uh, when we say emerging brands, emerging brands is like a, a pretty universal word, so to speak. But from our perspective, like we're thinking of, of emerging brands as those newer brands that are really trying to take food to a better place, right? Like something that's going to be cleaner and healthier for, you know, the end consumer. And so um, there aren't a ton of manufacturing facilities out there that to some degree, you know, aren't going to take a chance on something, you know, because their lines are probably filled with other people. Um, whereas, you know, we'll take a look and we will 
take a seat and see if we can help out. And if we can't, we'll actually try to help them send and find someone else for them, you know, whether they're big or small. What technological advancements are you leveraging right now, you know, to sure. really enhance the operational efficiency and product innovation at the Fresh Factory? Sure. You know, I think some of it, I, I will answer it in one way. Some of it's people, quite frankly. It's finding the right people who have an interest in bettering like the food itself, right? Because innovation in itself, um, it can be out there, but it's got to have, there's some people behind it that are able to do that. We have that capability. In now finding the capability, there are ways from a technology perspective that we can make food maybe fresher. And I think one of the things that's out there that I think is, is pretty well known is high pressure processing. Right. That's just another form of way of being able to make fresh product and produce from produce um, that we use in a multitude of the products that we have. And again, high pressure processing um, is taking finished goods in the finished packaging, um, making fresh product, putting in that finished packaging and it going into, um, you know, basically into a, a, a vault, so to speak, that it's pressurized with 87,000 pounds of PSI water pressure. Um, from like a two to three minute time span. It's been prevalent in the meat industry, you know, for many, many years. And, you know, over the last 10 to 15 years, it's really started to come out with whether it be in the juice space, the dip space, salsas, hummuses, things of that nature, where the product will go in, um, you know, fresh. And really, you're going to keep about, you know, a good chunk of the nutrients, 80% of the nutrients um, that are, the, to maintain that freshness of the product um, when it comes out. And, and you get a shelf life of freshness for about 120 days. Again, totally depending on which product category we're talking about and what the, the, the ingredients inside are. But that's kind of some of the technology that we are trying to leverage um, to, to contain and maintain that freshness. Because again, if, if we didn't use HPP, and in some cases, this is what we do as well, you can pasteurize it or heat it. But again, when you heat something, you then are taking more of the nutrients away as opposed to maintaining majority of the nutrients when you HPP a product. When balancing innovation and traditional values, that's not always easy, right? Yeah. So yep. how does the Fresh Factory maintain its commitment to quality and sustainability? Yep. You know, I, I think quite honestly, I mean, it really starts with myself and, and making sure that we stay true to the core of who we are from, from our mission and our values. Um, you know, I think, you know, um, unfortunately sustainability has turned into more of a buzzword i think for a lot of companies as opposed to like really i mean i think it's new ground right the reality is i think everyone's trying to figure out okay well what are the actual measurements of sustainability what is sustainability and what does it mean to everyone and i think what we've tried to do is try to define for ourselves what is sustainability for us but what is you know what are our mission what are our values and like really trying to stay true to our core and really from the top down, um, so to speak, making sure that, you know, we walk the walk, right? So if we're going to talk it, let's make sure that we walk it. And, you know, to your point, you know, innovation, in my mind, we've got to be very creative. Like we've got to have open minds. We've got to be willing to look at things that maybe others may not want to look at um, and really challenge ourselves to go the extra mile and, and figure out ways to be able to um, you know, invent new things. I mean, there's plenty of products we've made that are, whether they be even plant-based products that we've made um, that are new to the industry. And, you know, I think for us, and, and, and again, with innovation and our mission, you know, innovation is part of our mission, quite frankly. So it, it's within our core values. And so it's, you know, we're really just trying to get better every day. And, and in doing that, you know, keeping an open mind to the things that are out there, and then with that said, again, following our values and our, and, and our mission and, and really trying to uh, make sure that um, we're doing everything we can to, to keep that movement going forward. I love that. Well, you know, what? we've talked a lot about, you know, your, your company, which is great. Um, but I think something that is important for everyone tuning in to know about is, you know, why is there such high net worth investors you know, invested in yeah. Fresh Factory. And, yeah. you know, I know one of them is Kimball Musk, but there are other sure. investors. So what is the value that these investors see in your company that more investors need to pay attention to? 
Yeah, for sure. So yeah, you, you mentioned one of one of our investors and, you know, Kimball himself by trade, you know, he's a chef. And I think when you start to have people, um, you know, and again, we are very lucky and blessed to have, you know, high net worth people that back us. I, I think they believe in the mission and what we're trying to accomplish. I think that they realize and they want themselves for their kids and grandkids, 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 as we keep going and moving further down, they know and want to be a part of something that's built that is allowing us to, again, create clean label food. Like there's an avenue for people to go to get their products produced and then be able to get it to the end consumers. Again, trying to provide honest food for everybody. And I think that, you know, anybody that's within the food industry, I think would tell you to this day, um, it, this this fresh movement isn't going anywhere. Like the, the genie is out of the bottle. I think people realize that, you know, as time goes on, more and more data is going to continue to keep telling us that fresh and better and clean label food is going to give you a better, healthier life. It, it, I mean, that is, that's happening, right? Like we know that. And I, and quite honestly, in some cases, I think some of the high net worth the, the, in general too, they want to be a part of that, but they also see the opportunity, right? Somebody has to be the first ones to start doing it because if no one's going to do it, then it's never going to happen. Right. And so I think that there's a lot of, there's a lot of excitement to know that there's a platform where people can start to go to, to be able to make these fresh, clean products for people and be able to get it on shelf. And again, the more that this happens, there'll be competitors, people will start to come. But at the end of the day, what that, what that, that end up doing is that will actually then turn the norm of the food that we eat. We won't have these types of conversations because it'll be the norm that we're only eating the healthy, fresh, you know, foods. I mean, I look at my, my own children, um, you know, look, they're looking at the backs of labels. They're relatively young, you know, you're 11 and 14 years old. They spend more time looking at backs of labels than I think I ever looked at as a kid in my, I, I never even looked at a label when I was a kid. There's no way 40 years ago, I'm not looking at the back of a label. That's just not how it is. Today's youth and millennials and it's very different, right? People are spending their money because again, probably COVID had a, a big part of it. I would it, it help this movement, I'd say, because I think people realize like time can be very short and like, let's make sure we're taking advantage of it and making sure that we are eating the best foods possible for us to have, you know, a great quality of life. I echo a lot of those words, Bill, because even I know a lot of millennials and Gen Zs and what I've noticed is I agree with you. They are more than ever passionate about health. And 10 years ago, there was no way you would see non-alcoholic beer, for example. Exactly. Fact, exactly. I think it was starting to come as an emerging trend maybe like five years ago. But really yep. in the last year and a half is where there's been a lot more respect. Yep. I want to shift though, when we think of what makes a company go from good to great, especially in yep. this industry, what yep. do you think it is? I mean, again, this is very, very cliche, but people, I mean, I think people is a really, really big piece, um, you know, of why companies are able to go from good to great. Now, there's a lot that encompasses that. I think us being focused as a business and understanding like what we're really good at and what we're great at and staying the course and making sure that we do that with the right people. Uh, truly, that's what I believe takes a company from good to great. Again, when you have a common goal, and this goes back to my own training and when I played sports and whatnot and the teachings that I learned, when you have everybody that are that is aligned and has a common goal and they all believe, uh, things can happen for you that you could never even imagine. And I don't think it's any different than when you look at a company, even in ourselves, whether it's this company or any company. But if we've got people that are extremely passionate, which we do, that have a passion for what we're making and what we're doing and wanting to be a part of something bigger than themselves. People have to like not think about themselves. They have to think about a team. And when you put a collective team together and have one common goal, pretty difficult to stop. This is really difficult to stop. And I think that's what helps us continue to get from our good to great, right? Every day, one goal, one mission, learning together, growing, getting better every day. And then, you know, we'll find our successes as we move forward because we stay the course, 
we stay focused, we collectively are a team, we collaborate, and we move together. I respect that answer tremendously. We also see it not only in business, but we see it in sports teams. Like you said, we see it in families. It all comes from the top. And Bill, you know, as I've shared with you before, you know, my podcast, you know, it's more than just achieving greatness, right? But if I was to ask you, what is your definition of greatness? What would it be? Sheesh. Man, I'd say for I'd say for me personally, um, in, in the setting that I'm in with the people in place that I'm at, I think to me, greatness is stepping outside of the comfort zone of what normal society would say and do. Um, and that to me is within the food space. Again, being on a mission and doing something that is better than myself or leaving the place better than where I found it. So to me, it's it's planting new seeds and doing things that someone else maybe hasn't ever done before or has tried to start, you know, again, I don't want to say a movement, but really help take an industry and move it forward and really help it out so that literally everybody can be a part of it, not just a certain few. So like in this instance, to me, greatness is getting the word of mouth out about who we are and what we do. And then I think as people start to understand that, And again, it might not even be business in general that would come to us. It might just be that other people start to think about other ways of creating products and doing things just because we know that this is the right thing to do and it's better for us and it's better for everybody. To me, long-winded and round way of saying like, I think you can become great by being someone that really puts your, you know, you know, a flag in the ground and says, here's who we are and what we want to do. And we know it's good for everybody and then going and leading it and taking the charge and and, and moving forward with it. I think that's a beautiful definition. And uh, I think it says a lot about both yourself as well as your team, about what you guys stand by, you know, your passion. So again, loads of respect for me. So Bill, you know, a, a question that I ask all my guests is, you know, now that you've been on podcasts who is a future guest, you know, someone that you know personally that you would love to see on the show? Gosh, you know, I mean, there are so many different people um, and titans out there. Um, and you've had some, uh, quite frankly, and the people that I've listened to that you've had in the past are just phenomenal themselves. Interestingly enough, I, you know, and I say this because I, I, I'm, you know, he's near and dear to me, but my co-founder and partner, I think you could bring him on here. He's got a fascinating story in his own right. Um, and the things that he's been able to do and accomplish himself at a very young age. Um, it's pretty inspiring, quite frankly. Um, I don't think many people probably know too much about him, but, uh, he's definitely someone in the background that most people, uh, yet don't really know, but yet is doing some amazing, amazing things, uh, that, uh, are truly inspiring, quite honestly. And are you able to share a little bit more about who he is? Yeah. So, you know, his name is, is Nate Laurel. Again, he's my, my co-founder and partner of the Fresh Factory. But, um, you know, Nate's been an entrepreneur his whole life um, from starting a business, you know, in, uh, in grad school where he was putting the first ever online courses at his university uh, down at the University of Illinois, Champaign, Urbana, um, putting that online to, again, help and start a trading industry that literally revolutionized the entire trading industry. Um, to starting another business, um, taking, you know, cow manure and putting it into digesters and then using that uh, gas to put it in the net gas pipeline to then convert diesel engines to natural gas to be able to take trucks and semis across the U.S. and use natural gas um, to doing things within the real estate space and revolutionizing the way that real estate in general has been done and, and the types of buildings and things of that nature that that he's been able to do. And I mean, there's things that I'm not even mentioning that I can't even think of at the moment that, you know, he's been a part of a lot of great things. Um, And I think, you know, coming into this food space as well, um, you know, he's someone that's been at the forefront of a lot of different industries. And like just those that I just told you right there, they're pretty big when you go from finance to renewable energy to food. Uh, There's some pretty big titans there that, uh, you know, have been at the forefront of. Right. But that also says a lot about, again, his entrepreneurship mindset, 
and totally. who he is as a person, right? Being a problem yep. solver and, yep. and doing doing work that is meaningful to him, right? So, yep. you know, that's awesome. Yep. I will definitely pull that name on uh, on my list. Yeah. And uh, Bill, you know, before we sign off today, you know, where's the best place for my listeners to connect with you online? Yeah, so the best place to connect with us is uh, you can go to our website um, at www.thefreshfactory.com dot co that's just co um they can connect on there there's an info tab we've got all our information on there you've got our capabilities of who we are our personnel um but on there you can connect with us um, at info at the fresh factory dot co um and uh you know uh we can get back to you pretty quickly you know we usually do and we've got a great team behind us that's able to kind of um look at some things but again if you want to you know connect with me that's probably the quickest and fastest way. Uh, and I'd gladly take any phone calls, talk, et cetera, and help out any way we can. I love that, Bill. So I will be sure, you know, to add that to the podcast notes, just so everyone knows where to go. And Bill, you know, before we officially sign off, is there any other last words that you want to add to this conversation? You know what? Not really. You know, I, I mean, I want to thank you, honestly. I, I appreciate the opportunity to come on uh, on your your podcast because I know that, uh, you know, very few are lucky enough to be able to do that. So quite honestly, thank you so much. Um, it helps to get, you know, myself and our platform out there just so that people understand that, look, there are food uh, people, experts in, in the industry that are looking to continue to make better for you products. And I would love for people to see that, you know, um, if they're starting a business or an emerging brand or have an emerging brand and they feel that, look, there's, there's no one else out there that ca can't help and there's no one to help them. There is, there's people out there. There are companies like ourselves that will help you through that. And, uh, you know, again, whether you're small is small or you're working at some of the largest companies in the world, like I want people to know that they can come to us and rely on us and be able to help them with what they're looking for to create a better, better product for their customers, a cleaner product. That's awesome, Bill. So you know what? We will end on that final note. And again, pleasure to have you here. Thanks, Ben.